Today's episode of Jimmy's World, top 10 private jets you can buy for less than $500,000. Check them out. For 75 grand, you could go out and buy yourself a Dodge diesel pickup truck, or you could buy a private jet. This is for that up and coming YouTube star that wants to be balling. All right, let's get this ball rolling with his 1982 Mitsubishi MU300 Diamond. 75 grand. What the heck is that? What? Ah, that's why. Seven hours to overhaul. So you could get in this for in Miami, fly it to Seattle, and then you'd you'd have to hitch a ride back. So you got seven hours left at 75 grand. That's probably the cheapest private jet flight you'll get out of this thing. The Cessna Citation 500, known as the Slotation, it is one of the slowest private jets you can buy. However, good news, Cessna learned from their wicked ways and they have created the fastest private jet in the world, the Cessna Citation X Plus. But you ain't buying that for no 250 grand. This is a great deal on a 1973 Cessna Citation 500, 250 grand make offer. Here in the ad, it does say it is well maintained and ready to fly with all of your phase inspections up to date. That is fantastic. You can go about 1,200 miles on this thing and cruise, and this is where it got the nickname at. 324 knots not what I would call a rocket ship if you're operating out of a 4,000 foot runway that is the balance field length that it needs so that's the time that you uh, power up to get up to your rotation speed and then you pull the plug and you abort and slam on the brakes and slow down before you run off the end of the runway 3,851 according to the book pretty cool solid deal right here The exact opposite of that slotation is this Lear 24D. I mean, we're talking a top speed of 474 knots. That's 545 miles an hour. That is haul in the mail, baby. Woo! It'll go up to 45,000 feet and cruise at 418 knots. It'll take you about 1,400 nautical miles, and that's with you, a co-pilot, and four passengers. Rate of climb, this is fighter jet level, 6,800 feet a minute. Eat that, Slotation. Just look at the tip tanks on it. It looks like rockets on a fighter jet. The whole plane looks like a fighter jet that's just been stretched a little bit and added a couple of passenger seats. If it, the, the price is what makes it number eight on my list. Otherwise, this sucker would be number one all day long. It is a beautiful aircraft, goes wicked fast, like you Bostonites like to say. And it's, I mean, it, it's, it's a stinking fighter jet that's got passenger seats. That is exactly what you want in a private jet, if you're the pilot. If you're a passenger, you probably want something big like a... Gulfstream or you know something like that that's comfortable in the back but I want to do barrel rolls that's awesome I got so excited I forgot to mention that there's one for sale right now for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars definite step up from the citations and even the Lear for comfort is this kind of funny looking West Wind 2 that we got here? The West Wind is a business jet initially produced by Aero Commander as the 1121 Jet Commander. Now, before we get into the stats, you got to know some history. The reason it looks so funny and it's a mid wing, not a high wing and a low wing, is because my favorite kind of nutty professor, Ted Smith, the guy that designed my number one for 200 under 200, the Aerostar, hands down my favorite twin engine airplane of all time. He formed a company 
way back in the day and they ended up making the Aero Commander. Eventually it got sold to the Israel Aircraft Industries, IAI. It became the West Wind. Has a rate of climb of 5,000 feet a minute. This will cruise along at flight level 310, 436 knots. That's Mach 0.74. But look at the interior on this. Yeah, this is, a, this is a nice big step up. In the back, it's got a private lav with a little sink. I'm so fancy. Yeah, this is definitely executive jet level stuff that we're getting into now. Fun fact, in 1976, there was a terrorist takeover in Tel Aviv and the Israel Air Force used the West Wind as a maritime patrol aircraft. And they nicknamed it the IAI Sea Scan. This plane is just pornography. There's there's no two cents about it. This is ridiculous. Look at look at the winglets. It's got the little extra fin thingies in the back. It's oh just this should be illegal student pilots turn your eyes this is not meant for you coming in at number six what may well be the most perfect learjet of them all the learjet 31 series basically you take the model 35 which is a little bit bigger bigger engines all that Spoiler alert, it's on this list too. And you put those on the smaller 29, 28, 29, 55 model series, which has a little bit slicker wing, and you get this 31 series right now. It originally came out in 1990. The one we have listed for sale here today is a 95 model for $325,000. And it's the A variant, and basically the only difference between the 31 and the 31A is you get some fancier buttons up front. This is where Learjet is by far my favorite jet company on the planet, and I would love to do nothing but just an entire series of how freaking awesome Lears are. And their normal cruise altitudes are 41 to 47,000 feet. Most, I think all of the other airplanes we have, they would max out at 45,000 feet, most of them not even that high. And this one, max cruise altitude, now listen to this, 51,000 feet. Fantastic! Your big 737s that you fly on with Southwest, they're not flying anywhere close to that high. So you can just be zooming up higher and faster than them. This thing will cruise at 448 knots, that's 550 miles an hour, Mach 0.81, has a range of 1,631 nautical miles, a rate of climb, again, you gotta love a Lear, 5,480 feet a minute. The power plants on this bad boy is two Garrett TFE 731-2 turbo fans, pushing out 3,500 pounds of BTUs each. You can shove eight people in here, it's kind of cramped. Again, you're looking at a Learjet. You're not looking for big comfort. This is made for your fighter pilot. On a Lear, you don't get any of the fancy stuff. You don't get an enclosed bathroom. On this thing, you gotta just don't make eye contact whenever you're using the little bucket in the side there. And there's no place for your coffee or none of that stuff. This is a speed machine. As we age, things tend to migrate south. This next airplane, the Astra Gulfstream 1125, is an older version of the West Wind, which is an older version of the Aero Commander. If you'll notice, the wings started up top, and then as it got older, they got a little bit lower, until finally this rendition, which 
is sagging all the way on the bottom. I know how you feel. They kept most of the fuselage and tail and moved the wings down. They even made it taller by eight inches. That's what she's doing. Eventually, this airplane became the Gulfstream G100. You've got more buttons and knobs than one person could possibly push and spin, giving both people plenty of stuff to do. Max cruise speed, now this is book value, not real life, of 465 knots, a service ceiling of 41,500 feet, a total long range cruise of 3,000 nautical miles, of all the airplanes we've looked at so far, this one is the thirstiest at 1,750 pounds an hour. We take 1,750, divide that by the devil's number of 6.66, that's how many pounds of fuel one gallon weighs, and that gives us 262 gallons an hour, and then you multiply that times $4 a gallon, in fuel, this thing will run you a little over a thousand bucks an hour in fuel. If I'm honest, this one is pretty boring. Let's move on to some more exciting ones. Just like a classic Corvette, if you talk to an owner, he will spend hours endlessly telling you, mm, yeah, so this screw uh, was made on March 3rd uh, by Buford C. Philamander, and, and it was raining that day of 74% humidity. And he'll go on and on and on telling you about all these crazy little details. And you're like, dude, I just wanted to know what color that was. There are currently two of these available for sale right now. One of them is $219,000. The other one comes in at $395. We'll smash right into the numbers. This DeSalt Falcon 10 was produced from 1971 and ended in 1989. Ironically, it came after the Falcon 20. Go figure that. That must be a French thing or something. I don't know. Average speed of 428 knots, a max speed of 490 knots. That is cooking. Woo! It has a range of just under 2,000 nautical miles. How much does it cost to run one of these? Well, it's only $16.45 a mile. Came across this little blurb here, and it says to do the sea inspection. That's the one where you take a whole bunch of stuff apart and you check it out. Now that's just the inspection. That's not to fix or replace anything. It's going to run you darn near as much as you pay for the airplane. $175,000. If you need a gear rebuild, eh, that's just an even $300,000. Oof, that is painful. Not a whole lot to say about this one. It's fast. It's a Falcon. It, you know, looks like a jet. They're old, expensive, it's everything you would expect in a private jet. This Hawker 400A is a newer version of that Mitsubishi MU 300 Diamond we saw earlier. There was also a military version of this called the T1 Jayhawk. The United States Air Force uses these for their tanker and strategic transport pilots to help train them and get them familiar with larger aircraft. The speeds, now I'm gonna start with the military version, a cruise speed of 392 knots. The civilian version has a cruise speed of 447 knots. Just like in real life with everything else, the government makes everything go slower. There was a bunch of these things made over time. Over 900 Hawkers have been made since it came out in 1978. There's a few of them for sale, 425,000 to start to 450 and on up. Many of these are still on a part 135 charter, which is a way airplane owners can lease their airplanes out to something like NetJets to be able to offset some of the cost of ownership Now 
now we are getting into some seriously cool stuff with some wicked awesome history to it. James Bond Goldfinger, Miss Pussy Galore, <laughs> piloted and then crashed it into the ocean. It was also in Nicolas Cage's Face Off. A hunk of hunk of burning airplane. This plane, Elvis owned two of these jet stars in his time. One was the Hound Dog 2, and it's currently on display in Graceland, so you can go see it. Frank Sinatra owned one of these. That's cool. Mr. Howard Hughes owned one of these. My favorite owner of this airplane is Lyndon B. Johnson. He preferred it during his time as vice president and president. It was the Air Force One Half. He is definitely behind JFK. President Richard Nixon had one, and strangely enough, he then sold it to the Shah of Iran. Huh. Didn't see that happening. Among other presidents, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, and everybody's favorite, Ronald Reagan. This has carried more presidents than any other aircraft in history. We've got one here for sale for $495 thousand dollars got a bat phone in there that just having four jet engines on it that that sells me right there My goodness this is one sexy beast this thing will make you do things that you ought not to be doing leaders should change their name to las vegas you should sign a waiver before you're allowed to look at things like this we've got this one right here for four hundred and seventy four thousand nine hundred dollars affordable and fast all right we all know that affordable and private jet are never in the same sentence on a regular airplane, which is already expensive, if something breaks, it's immediately $2,500. On this, if something breaks, it's immediately $25,000. It's the same problem with an extra zero. The Learjet 35A. It's a fast aircraft, capable of cruising at Mach 0.83, up to 550 miles per hour. And it is the first truly long-range economical business jet capable of spanning the three great distances necessary for worldwide corporate aircraft utilization. Transcontinental, transatlantic, and transpacific to Hawaii. In 1976, Arnold Palmer, yep, that tea and lemonade guy, he set a round-the-world record in his plane in 57 hours, 25 minutes, and 42 seconds. 20 years later, a couple of TV station guys, they took the same airplane, a Learjet 35, and beat that record by almost 10 hours at 49 hours, 21 minutes, and 8 seconds. That is 22,894 miles all the way around the world. It was so good that the military wanted their hands on this thing. They used it to transport three and four star generals. The Japanese also liked the way this thing operated and they started using it for some pretty cool stuff. Some of them were even used for anti-submarine warfare. How cool is that? This legitimately is a military fighter jet with passenger seats. And in case it wasn't fast enough for you, the uh, Skunk Works version by Rans Beck Engineering would modify these things so that it would carry a little bit more, make it a little slicker, and go an extra .02 Mach faster. 8,000 foot per minute climb. That's faster than some of those fighter jets that we looked at the other day. I love this plane so much. Yeah, that Cherokee's gone. I'm going to go live in a Learjet. 
If you haven't already, hit that like, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos. I am having a ton of fun doing it, and I'm glad you're enjoying it.